Hello there, welcome to a video tutorial here on solving linear quadratic systems. So this video is really going to tie together a bunch of the stuff that I've done in some previous video lessons, which involved solving equations and working with quadratics. So we're going to apply all that stuff to find the points where a given line intersects a given quadratic. So a linear and a quadratic can intersect in a couple different ways. I've got a blue parabola here and I'm showing the different ways that a given line could intersect that parabola. So the first way is at two points, and, and this is what we call a secant line. So you can see that I've got two points of intersection here between my line and my parabola. Another way is at one point. So this is what we call a tangent line. So this line happens to touch the quadratic at one point. So we call that a tangent. The purple line here is never, it is possible for this line to never touch this quadratic. You can imagine this thing going on forever in, in both directions. And as well as this line going forever in both directions. There's no way that those two are going to intersect. So what we're going to do in this video is sort of just look at these three cases and eventually we'll, we'll show how to actually determine what the point of intersection are for the system. So a little bit of review on, on this discriminant. Uh, typically we use the discriminant to determine the number of x-intercepts a quadratic has. We can also use this discriminant to determine whether a line intersects a quadratic zero, one, or two times. And the scenarios are very similar to when we worked with quadratics. So the first scenario, if your discriminant's greater than zero, you've got two intersections. If it's equal to zero, you've got one intersection. If it's less than zero, you have no intersections. So these three scenarios we just looked at here, graphically. What we end up doing is factoring, or we can use the quadratic formula and uh, to determine the actual points of intersection. And we're gonna do that in a minute. But first I wanna just sort of show you how to apply this discriminant to these sorts of problems. Okay, so just a quick example here. The, the problem says, how many points of intersection do the following linear and quadratic relations have? Okay, so I've got a quadratic here. I've got a line here. I'm going to determine how many times this line intersects this quadratic, if at all. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through this, the, the process here. So the first step is you're going to eliminate your y by setting the two equations equal to each other. And we can do that because if, if we're finding the points of intersection, the, the y value where that where the point of intersection occurs should be the same. So we can we can set these two equal to each other. And we're really we're just going to collect our like terms just to sort of simplify this a little bit. So remember using algebra I can I can bring all my x terms over to one side. I might as well bring this negative four over as well and just sort of collect my like terms. Okay, so I do that and I end up, end up with this new quadratic relation. Okay, this is like this is a quadratic relation that sort of has engulfed our, our linear relation. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is use the discriminant, and I'm just going to evaluate and see and see what happens. So I'm going to evaluate the discriminant, and I'm just going to interpret that. So if I do that, I just substitute in b refers to the coefficient in front of x, your a refers to the coefficient in front of x squared, and the c value is just the number at the end here. So I substitute all those values in, and I end up getting 16. That doesn't mean that I have 16 points of intersection. That means that since it's a positive number, I have two points of intersection. That's scenario one. We've got two points of intersection because our discriminant happens to be positive. So let's actually determine what the coordinates of those two points of intersection happen to be, right? I just showed there's two, but I'm, I'm not interested in the number of points of intersection. I'm interested in the location of those points of intersection. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Okay, I'm going to set them equal to each other, sort of collect my like terms. I'm going to just work with this quadratic. Okay, so I've common factored out of four. My goal here is to determine the x-intercepts. So I do that by factoring. So I'm going to find two numbers that add to get to negative 5 and multiply to get 6. It turns out they're negative 3 and 2. All right, so I've got two binomials now with the two numbers I just came up with. And my goal is to now solve for x. So I'm going to, I'm going to sort of just separate my, my two binomials. This 4 just kind of comes along for the ride. There's no, there's no reality where 4 equals 0, so I sort of just dismiss that 4. I'm going to isolate x uh, in both of these situations. So I'm going to determine my two x-intercepts. Okay, so you can see I've got 3 and 2. Now I've been calling these x-intercepts, but remember these aren't actually x-intercepts. These are the x-coordinates of the points of intersection, right? So this is not, remember this wasn't just any old quadratic. This was a quadratic that had sort of engulfed this linear relation. So these x-coordinates here refer to the x values of the points of intersection between this line and this quadratic. To get the y coordinate, I'm going to substitute my two x values into either original equation. So I can substitute that into my line or my quadratic. And it doesn't matter which one. I'm going to just pick the line because it's much easier than, than squaring. 
Okay, so I substitute 3 in, I get 11, and I substitute 2 in, and I get 6. If I were to graph the quadratic in this, in this linear relation, you can see that those are, in fact, the points of intersection between the linear relation and the quadratic relation. Okay, so just one more example. This is sort of a, a challenging problem uh, that I like to uh, put on tests, or you might, you might see your teacher put this on a test. In this situation, we're, we're being given a slope of 2, and we're saying that the, the line that has a slope of 2 is tangent to this given quadratic relation. What we're being asked to do is determine the equation of that line that happens to be tangent to this quadratic. So let's just think back to what the word tangent means. You remember, tangent means it touches the quadratic at one point. So this line is tangent to the quadratic, it touches at one point. And in order for a line to be tangent to a quadratic, we know that it can only touch once, so our discriminant should be equal to zero. Remember, when the discriminant is equal to zero for a linear quadratic system, we have one point of intersection. So that's what we want to do here is we want to use that information to determine the equation of this line. Let's start just by writing an equation for our line. We don't know our y-intercept. All we know is our slope. So we're going to write this thing in slope-intercept form. Right? So we've got y equals mx plus b here. m is our slope. So we substitute in 2. And we're just going to sort of work with this bizarre relation. I know it's kind of confusing because we don't know our y-intercept, but that's okay. We're just going to kind of truck along and see what happens. So we're going to follow the same procedure. We're going to eliminate our y by setting these two equal to each other. Remember, we know that if these things intersect, they're going to have the same y value. We can just sort of get rid of our y value here and set these two equal to each other. Okay, and we're going to simplify by collecting our like terms in the same way. We're just going to bring everything over to one side of the expression. So this is kind of a nasty looking expression, but it's nothing that we can't handle. right? If we take a look at this, we still have an a value, we've got a b value, and we've got a c. Our, our c just happens to be negative 1 plus b. Right. Normally this is one number, but because we don't know our y-intercept, we have to sort of tackle this thing as the entire c value. Okay. So what we're going to do is, similar to the last example, uh, where we used the discriminant to determine the number of points of intersection, the key to solving this one is also, it also lies in the discriminant. But we know that our discriminant is going to be equal to zero because there is only one point of intersection. Remember, our line is tangent to the quadratic. So we're going to use the fact that our discriminant is equal to zero, and we're going to solve for our y-intercept. Okay, if we can find our y-intercept, then we should be able to write the equation of the line that happens to be tangent to this quadratic. So we're going to plug everything into our discriminant. Just pretend that this is a number, right? This is our c value. So we substitute our b, we substitute a, we substitute c, and next we just have to sort of do some algebra and solve for b. So I'm going to multiply these two guys together to get 8, and then the rest is really just algebra work. Uh, remember your distributed property. You can use that here to remove your brackets. Uh, you're just collecting your like terms here. So you end up with 12. I brought my negative 8b over to the other side. And to solve for b, I just divide by 8. It should be 3 over 2. So we've got our, our y-intercept. So we can just sort of substitute our y-intercept back into the equation of our, of our line. Uh, we have our slope. We've got our y-intercept. Uh, we've got a new, we've got our, our equation of our line. Sorry, I've got the incorrect y-intercept there. Let me just patch that up for you. Definitely a, a challenging problem. But really what we're doing is just sort of applying our understanding of the, the discriminant and what it means for a linear quadratic system.